The girl held a fully equipped 98K and aimed at a distant target. However, just as she was about to pull the trigger, an incredibly strong polar bear appeared in the frame. The group immediately panicked as they saw the bear getting closer and closer. Yukai suddenly raised the 98K and shot the polar bear. They thought the danger was over, but then they heard a terrifying roar. The polar bear stood up again and charged towards them, the little girl on the sidelines stood frozen in fear. Yukai intended to shoot again, but due to his nervousness he was slow to load a single bullet. The polar bear was getting closer and her sister was in danger. At the critical moment, Maka quickly pushed Yuka aside, took the 98k and quickly loaded it. At the moment when the polar bear pounced on her sister, Maika decisively aimed at its head and pulled the trigger. Seeing her sister fall to the ground, Mika hurriedly approached to check on her. Luckily, she was unharmed. The group hastily left the scene in a state of confusion. Little did they know that the polar bear was not dead. Instead, a terrifying parasite emerged from its eyes. Upon returning to the town, they shared the incident with their other friends. A police officer noticed the gathering of so many children and approached to inquire about their presence. Faced with the officer's questions, they collectively remained silent. After all, they had secretly taken their family's hunting rifle and accidentally killed a protected animal in the area. If the police were to find out, it would surely lead to trouble. Unbeknownst to them, on the other side, a parasite had already arrived at the docks. The fishermen who were busy working had no idea that danger was imminent. Suddenly, a rope on the ground was pulled over, and the fisherman's foot happened to get caught in it. He was dragged into the water. Meanwhile, Yukai, who had just been separated from the others, returned to the scene of the incident. He was surprised to find that the polar bear's body had disappeared. Curious, Yukai began searching around and saw a deer dragging a human corpse. It was the fisherman who had been attacked earlier. Instead of feeling scared, Yukai decided to follow along. Soon enough, he followed the deer and came across a massive lump of flesh. He also spotted the missing polar bear. The lump of flesh was covered in tentacles, clearly not a creature from Earth. It was evident that this organism was responsible for the polar bear's resurrection. Just as Yukai was captivated by what he saw, a polar fox suddenly attacked him from behind, its mouth extending disgusting tentacles. Yukai quickly grabbed a small knife from his belt and killed the arctic fox with a quick slash. He then flung the body away and hastily got up to run. However, shortly after he left, the infected polar bear and deer arrived. The polar bear extended its tentacles from its eyes and discovered that the polar fox was completely dead. It let out an angry roar. When Yukai returned, he told his companions everything he had witnessed. But how could they possibly believe him? Unbeknownst to them, at that very moment, the vengeful polar bear had already followed them to the town. The first victim was this laid-back policeman. When he saw the polar bear appearing here, he attempted to drive it away. However, the officer had no idea that it was a mutated polar bear. Instead of leaving, it attacked the police officer. Thus, the parasite entered the officer's body. Meanwhile, Yukai was still trying to explain the recent events to his companions. Little did they know, at that moment, the completely mutated police officer stumbled into the scene. His grotesque appearance was clearly abnormal. However, the monster had a clear target in mind and headed straight towards Yukai. Disgusting tentacles extended from its palm. Witnessing this scene, everyone in the room was immediately frightened and scattered in all directions. Yukai, realizing the danger, quickly rushed upstairs, but the monster pursued him relentlessly. In a bizarre posture, although Yukai managed to enter a bedroom and barricaded the door with a bed, he underestimated the monster's destructive power. With the monster about to break through the door, Yukai had no choice but to climb out of the window before the monster could catch up with her. Yukai jumped into the compartment of a car downstairs. Meanwhile, Maika took the opportunity to approach from behind and delivered a fatal blow to the monster. After dealing with the monster, Maika quickly pulled Yukai and joined the others. However, most of the adults in the town were out working, leaving behind mostly children. As they pondered what to do next, Maika suddenly remembered that her sister was still at home. As expected, the infected fisherman had already arrived at her house. When the little girl saw this scary uncle in front of her, she dropped the sweets in her hands in fear. In the next second, the monster approached the girl step by step, cornering her into a corner. Just as the monster extended its tentacles, ready to infect the girl, 
Mika arrived in the nick of time, she rushed back home and pulled her sister back from the brink of death. She instructed the others to take her sister and leave quickly while she stayed behind to hold off the monster. After they safely left, Mika took the opportunity to slip into the bedroom and escape through the window. However, as soon as she reached the road, the monster followed suit and chased after her. Along the way, they encountered the mutated police officer. They had no choice but to hide in a nearby shipping container. However, the monster didn't seem to want to leave and climbed on top of the container and kept banging on it. They were getting nervous. But soon the monster stopped attacking and they stood at the entrance, waiting for their chance. Seizing the moment, Maka quickly called her parents for help. But their calls were tossed aside and not heard. They then dialed the emergency hotline. Although the call went through and the police arrived promptly, they were immediately attacked by the monster as soon as they got out of their car. The only hope of rescue shattered. Realizing that staying inside the container was not a viable solution, they discussed and decided to confront the monster themselves. Micah grabbed an iron rod, Yukai held a piece of clothing to lure the monster, and they quickly attracted the creature's attention. Seizing the opportunity, Micah thrust the iron rod into the monster's face. The three of them quickly ran out of the shipping container, leaving the rest of the group inside. It turned out their goal was not to escape but to return home and equip themselves with weapons, preparing for a decisive battle against the monster. Everything was ready the trio set off with confidence. However, upon their return, they discovered that the two monsters were nowhere to be found. Nevertheless, they were determined not to let them escape and began searching the area. In no time, they heard some movement near the cabin. They asked Jesse to climb up with a fishing net to investigate, but it turned out to be a dog. But just as Jesse lets her guard down, a monster suddenly attacks her. The other two rush to her aid. Just then, Jesse found himself entangled with the monster in the fishing net. Without hesitation, Yukai quickly grabbed a large knife and lashed out at the monster. They successfully eliminated one of the creatures. At that moment, another boy arrived in town on a motorbike. Upon learning about the monster's presence and their ongoing battle, he immediately decided to join forces. In order to lure out the remaining creature, Yukai bravely volunteered to act as bait while Maika positioned herself nearby with a hunting rifle, ready to strike at any moment. This plan proved to be effective as the monster soon appeared within their sight. At crucial moment, however, Maika dropped the chain and failed to hit the target with several shots. Fortunately, they had prepared a trap on the ground in advance. When the monster reached the designated spot, the boy quickly drove his car, pulling tightly on the rope. To their surprise, the monster extended its tentacles and bit through the rope, then turned its attention towards Yukai. Yukai rushed to escape he ended up under a house in a panic. The space was narrow, allowing only a crawling movement which worked in favor of the monster. Maka rushed to the other hole to help him, but the hole was too small Yukai couldn't climb out for half a day. Eventually, the monster caught up, grabbing Yukai's leg with its tentacle. Thankfully, their two companions arrived just in time and managed to pull Yukai out of the opening. Yet, the whereabouts of the monster remained unknown. Maika instructed the boy to stay with Yukai while she and Jesse went to search for it. Soon enough, they discovered traces of the monster on the ground, leading towards Micah's home. They followed the trail and entered the house but found no sign of the creature. Instead, they encountered Micah's father returning from work. Just then, the father suddenly noticed a blood-stained piece of clothing on the floor. Before he could inquire about what happened, the monster swiftly attacked him from the side. Knocking him down, Micah tries to help but gets punched away. Fortunately, she was unharmed, but then she turned her head and saw the monster holding her father down, tentacles outstretched ready to infect him. Meanwhile, more parasites crawled in through the cracks, the floor, and even the windows. Upon seeing this, Jesse quickly rushed to rescue Micah from under the cabinet. When saw father about to be infected, Maka grabbed a harpoon from the ground and stabbed it at the monster. followed by a slash with her knife. Finally, the creature was completely eliminated. As it fell, the tentacles that had invaded the house instantly lost their vitality. I always thought you were too cool. I always thought you were too crazy. You never talked to me at school before. Why didn't you ever talk to me? In the end, 
The entire parasite's mother body escaped with a beam of bright light. It seemed that they had not just defeated a few monsters but rather a species of extraterrestrial beings attempting to invade the Earth. Wait, 